Women have minds and souls, as well as heart and ambition and talent, as well as beauty. And I am sick of being told that love is all a woman is good for. I am sick of it. I'm Photo Storms, and this is my first. I'm Adaya Fuluake Ogunke, um, and I'm the person behind the personality that is Folu Storms, which is actually a legal branded name <laughs> that I had made. Um, when I was getting on radio and how Folu Storms sort of came about was, it was impromptu. Someone was already using their, my first name, which is Adaya, on radio, and I wanted something different, and I'd never come across a girl who was called Folu. So I was like, do you know what? My middle names are Foluake, that makes sense. Let's just go with that. And also because I'm not part Igbo, I'm Yoruba and Cross River. So I just figured, you know, for simplicity's sake, Folu's makes sense. Is my name? They're gonna call me that. So there you are. It is interesting that I started off with a monologue because I think it was in secondary school. I'd just gone into the Lagoon Secondary School for Girls, GS1, and it's a Catholic all girls school. And it was very small, I was the third set there. So it was just a, a, you know, a very, very small number of girls and women. And in this school, very interestingly, because apparently that's what happens in Catholic girls schools, we had um, Latin as one of our subjects that we took. And we, we found it fascinating because who goes to school and learns Latin? But, you know, that was part of it. And there was a, we had a Latin day that was dedicated to all things Latin. And, and so for Latin day, our headmistress um, asked for different people to perform different things, you know, and they gave me a monologue to perform. And it was the speech that Mark Antony gave at the death of Julius Caesar. And I remember being nervous, but doing this in front of your peers and people that don't know you is a very different feeling. So when I was given this, this thing and they were like, yeah, it's a long monologue speech. To me, it looked crazy. I was like, okay. I was nervous, learned it, but then got out into the quadrangle and I was surrounded by all the students. Um, and everyone settled down and then I completely zoned out. Because you see, an interesting thing about acting is that it is not pretending to be something. It is allowing your emotions to surface. That's the truth of acting. It's breaking down the masks that we wear in our everyday life and allowing the way that you would feel about any situation. The only difference between an acted situation or a film and real life is that the circumstances are imaginary, so you have to shift the circumstances. But everything that is projected is real. And that was the first time that it happened to me. Mark Antony was the best friend of Julius Caesar, and Julius Caesar had just been murdered. And he was murdered by someone who was also meant to be friends with them as well, Brutus. And Mark Antony shows up and says, you know, the evil that men do um, live after them, but the good is often turned with their bones. And he goes on and talks about how people say, you know, Caesar was ambitious and then lists all the beautiful things his friend had done. And I think the reason this, this monologue hit me so much and it was so powerful was because it had to do with grief, which is such a raw and real human emotion. And at that point, I'd actually just lost my mother. So being able to let go and allow the emotion of grief for somebody that you love. So even thinking about it now and going back into it, I get emotional. And I performed this in front of the school and I completely zoned out. I don't recall really seeing people. I recall the feeling. And I recall wanting people to feel it. I wanted people to understand like th this thing that was happening and all of you are sitting there in your nice robes and you're all pretending like you're great men. But that man, that man that you all stabbed and you were listening to Brutus, Brutus? Is that the good man? And so all the words came pouring out and the emotion came tumbling out. And there were tears and all, you know, all this stuff, you know, sniffing at the end of it because it really took over. At that point, it was Mark Antony. It wasn't, it, that's not, that was not my grief. I was just allowing this emotion to be channeled. And when I finished, I remember everywhere being silent because I, I, you, you kind of rock back into yourself when you look. And then all these girls like just stand up. <laughs> They're really clapping. 
and and then you feel self-conscious and you're you know like your awkwardness kind of comes back you're like oh thanks you know um but but that that feeling hit me in my gut because it was this incredible release of emotion um that you are allowed to most of us even in our, in our real lives now our adult lives we don't really feel that we're allowed to express emotion we mask everything even with people that we claim that we love the love is conditional. What we've told ourselves is love is very limited. It's like, yeah, I love you as long as you make me feel good. But the second you don't make me feel good, I'm gonna take that back. And that's crazy. That's not what love is. That, that's not how it's supposed to be. Um, that first monologue, it, it, hit my, it hit my core. It hit my core. And I think for a couple of years after, um, I, I, I dove into Shakespeare completely because, you know, just writing such emotion, it, it, it was eye-opening and so you know the love of books and, and and stories all kind of work together because they're all just different ways of not just escaping but actually being and seeing human emotion mirrored in a way that is honest and true and so acting is not pretending and is actually one of the truest things if people are doing it properly that that you ever get to experience which is why sometimes you you know you watch movies and you cringe or you like you want to hide you're like hey you know or like some actors are completely vilified i mean look at young king joffrey he used to stun him on the road now. And he, you see him cop on his shoe. He's, he's just doing his job. Um, but I loved it. So that's, that's my first, my first monologue. I, I started off life as a lawyer. So I'm a qualified solicitor in the UK and in Nigeria. I'm a barrister here. And that was always what I was going to do in my life as far as I understood it. It set clear path. The firm I was working at was actually my father's firm. So that caused a, a lot of problem. Not a bit, a lot of problems. Like, what, 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 what do you think you're doing? You are living love them to go and be dancing on the street for how much more what are you doing and i thought about it because I, I really was going through things so i said you know i'm gonna step back from the firm i'm just gonna quit um so i called a meeting with my father and told him that i was leaving the firm and i was met with silence let's just say the next two and a half years was tensed in my household so i created what initially was called the eccentric african and then later on ended up being called The New Africa. Pitched it um, to a couple of radio stations. So eventually Charlotte Thompson heard it and that's when he asked me to come on radio. That's when he heard my voice. And then the next day he was like, yeah, come back tomorrow. And that's how I got into entertainment. That's how I got my first job. I got into entertainment very much by chance, but following very much what I was passionate about. And fast forward three years later, MTV comes to look for me to ask me to come and host a show. Um, and so I ended up working with MTV for a couple, a few years, hosting different shows for them. Fast forward, um, I then ended up on BET. Fast forward, MTV Sugar alone together have called me in, and now as an actor, um, and I'm in that series. So it, it's been a, it's been an interesting journey. I think where my parents really accepted what I was doing and, and being in entertainment, so both on, on radio, television, etc., um, was shortly after the VJ search, and they began to see how invested I was in it, but also how I was able to take care of myself. And I was becoming independent and I was growing and other people were really recognizing this growth. You know, the average Nigerian parent, I think that, that concern and worry of second guessing you and checking you is because they just want you to be able to succeed. And as, you, as a young adult, it's very hard to understand that real fear that parents have, that man, what is entertainment you want to do? What is this? What's that? Well, I've spent thousands of pounds on your head for you to be successful in life, then you want to be, I think out of anger one day, I think my dad said, there's some, some, something. so you just be a bloody radio announcer? I had to go and Google radio announcer. My dear, do you know what radio announcer is? And the time is now 6 p.m. I said, chai, my chest. This is what my father thinks I'm doing. Um, but you can't blame them. They've really seen me thrive and grow. And Mumsy, uh, my stepma, she's like the cool, like see, she was chief number one, person against it initially. The second this thing began to make sense, you know, I'm proud of you everywhere I go. So she's the one that does that. But, so I've just been in the house, someone will come to visit. Oh, do you know my daughter, follow storms? You don't know follow storms, follow storms? Yeah, check the, mom say, just come, relax. Come down, let's. <laughs> um, but she's the first person that even told me directly to my face. She goes, you know what? I know we fought you on this. I know we fought you every step of the way, but I'm so proud of you that you insisted on doing this thing because you are doing so well and you're so good at it that we could never really have imagined or understood where this could take you and how far you could continue to go. So that was a beautiful thing. I'm Folu Storms, an actor, presenter, and world traveler. And this is my first.